First at four, building an American-made supply chain. The former Michigan governor talk, talking about what it means for Michigan workers. Plus, here's Paul. Okay, this is a fun one. This might actually be the best holiday concert you'll see all season long. Take a look at this. Wait till you find out the combined singing experience of this course. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Pamela Osborne in today for Karen Drew. First at four, Detroit police are looking for a driver in a road rage incident involving shots fired at an off-duty officer. We're still getting details about this, but we're told the off-duty officer works at the 10th precinct. There was some kind of a road rage confrontation at Larchmont Street, that's right near 96 and Tireman this morning. It's not entirely clear where that gunfire came from, but luckily no one was hurt. Police are searching for the driver, but haven't shared any other information about that suspect or the vehicle. We'll have an update on the search tonight at 5. There is breaking news right now from Detroit police. The department is showing off its new non-lethal weapons. They also talked about body cameras. The changes come after two recent deadly shootings of people who were in the middle of a mental health crisis. An assistant chief says changes offer officers more options, but will not rule out lethal force entirely. These non-lethal weapons and body cameras will help us in serving the community every day as we go out and we continue to serve the citizens of the city of Detroit. And this is not to say that um, we, may, we may not have to use deadly force. I mean, that's just a part of what we do uh, in policing. But we do not want to do that on a daily basis. These weapons will allow us uh, the opportunity to try to resolve those situations prior to getting to that level. We have a crew at that news conference, which started just in the past half hour. You'll get a look at the weapons and hear more from that assistant chief on Local 4 News at 5. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm says the U.S. needs to build an American-made supply chain to support electric vehicles. She was in Dearborn today to kick off a battery workforce initiative. The new EV investment focuses on Lansing as well as spots in Ohio and Tennessee. It's a private-public partnership with Ultium Cells, which is a part of General Motors. They're going to be building new battery plants. Granholm, a former Michigan governor, talked about the payoff. We need to have jobs that workers want to pursue and that they want to train for and that they can grow in. That supply chain requires droves of workers and they are literally jobs that did not exist in this country before. These are parts of the supply chain that we're building entirely from scratch. Today marked the closing of a $2.5 billion loan to Ultium to build those new battery manufacturing plants. Meantime, gas prices continuing to drop in Metro Detroit and across the state. You'll pay about $3.10 per gallon to fill up today. That's 19 cents less than this time last week. The statewide average is down 85 cents from last month this time. More supply and less demand pushing those prices lower. If you do need to fill up this week, experts think prices will continue to drop over the next several days. Right now, let's take a look at first at the forewarned forecast. Tonight is going to be cloudy and quiet, but there are change changes looming our way. Paul Gross is in for Kim Adams and Paul. Why don't you tell us what we have coming? Well, fortunately, we're in the middle of a stretch of fairly quiet weather. Great shopping weather, maybe not as pretty as we'd like, but listen, as long as it's dry and it's not bitter cold, I think you can get out and do just about whatever you want. Look at 38 at City Airport in Detroit, 38 at Livonia. We have 38 at Metro, 36 right now at uh, 38 in Taylor, 36 at Metro, 36 in Canton in our south zone, 36 right now in Dundee, 37 in Carlton. Celine, you're at 36 degrees. Similar numbers here in our west zone, Whitmore Lake, you're at 35, 35 also at Milford. And then in our north zone, just a tad cooler. We're below freezing here at Deckerville where it's 31 degrees, 34 at Port Huron, and then 34 across the way there. Romeo over to Oxford, over to Ortonville, 35 at Pontiac. You see all the cloud cover, pick your favorite shade of gray. There's cloud cover out there, but we do have a little bit of hope for tomorrow, not this evening. We're going to keep the clouds through the evening, but it will be dry, slow drop through the 30s, but maybe a hint of sun tomorrow and then bigger changes coming our way. We'll talk more about that in just a few.
A powerful winter storm is moving across the country. This video comes from an NBC crew driving on a highway north of Salt Lake City. The storm started on the west coast and is making its way east. Some Utah schools even had to delay their start time so that snow could be cleared from the roads. The storm will have some impact on us. Paul will look at the changes ahead during his next update. The clock is ticking toward a funding deadline for Congress. If lawmakers don't take action before Friday at midnight, we could see a government shutdown. That said, there's probably a short term solution to prevent the worst case scenario. Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom and Kim will be watching the news of this all week as it develops. You're right, Pam, and good afternoon to you. A Democrats and Republicans are bickering over the details of a funding bill worth about one point five trillion dollars. The stakes are a bit higher for Democrats who will lose control of the House come January. Now, there are actually 12 appropriations bills under consideration. None of them have final agreement yet. One Republican senator says the two parties are about $25 billion apart, which is less than 2% of last year's spending. If an agreement seems unlikely by the Friday deadline, Democrats could rush a stopgap continuing resolution to keep the government funded at last year's levels for uh, some period of time. So the spending plans are already two months overdue as they're supposed to be passed by October 1st when Washington's fiscal year started. So right now the Biden administration says it doesn't see a strong likelihood of a government shutdown, but understands it may need a continuing resolution to buy more time to get the job done. So four years ago, Congress, you may remember, missed the deadline leading to a 35 day interruption that nearly resulted in the closing of major airports on the East Coast. We'll have an update when you join us for Local 4 News at 5 o'clock. Until then, Pam, Pam, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Kimberly. Sure. Now it's time for holiday cheer that is thousands of years in the making, thanks to some local sing seniors who just love to sing. <laughs> Residents from assisted living and independent living performed their first holiday concert since COVID silenced their songs. Paula Tutman was there, and Paula, I think I have a pretty good idea, but why don't you tell us how it was? Yeah, you know what? Fabulous. I want you to listen to them, right? They sound absolutely amazing. And you know, this was really more than just a concert because it was a chance to gather with old friends, see people you hadn't seen in a while, and also connect these communities. And it, it was really wonderful. It's a holiday concert for the ages. No, seriously, the ages, the real ages. As the Walton Woods Senior Communities came together in Canton for one big performance. For more than three months, each community has been practicing for this one big day, an annual event that got benched for two years because of COVID. Walton Woods, University and Lakeside joined forces for eight full songs. In that group, a former Oakland County judge who says, please don't judge him by his singing. Though, how can you not reach a verdict of perfect with that deep, beautifully dark and smoky baritone voice? And sometimes I'm off key, but it's a joy. Royal Oak performed Away in the Manger and Deck the Halls. Twelve Oaks provided in-between entertainment with line dancing. And there you find a retired teacher who's found the fountain of youth wonderfully tucked in her feet and hands and hips and humor. I am a very faith-based person and I know that they say you have to dance to the Lord, be joyful, and that's what I do. Cherry Hill hosted the event and of course did Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And Carriage Park rounded things out with Angels We Have Heard On High. The big finale, all of the singers from all of the communities, 72 strong, joined together for We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Okay, so I know you're all asking the same question, and that is, what is the combined age of all of these singers? Get this, 6,100 20 years. Every beautiful face here, every tapping finger, every song lifted in joy has a long history in the background. You're accustomed to being, as we say, under fire and of course uh, 
It's enjoyable, but it takes a lot of work. Isabel Cole is 96 years old and remembers singing at her mother's knee as a child. And she's still singing. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Music is food for the soul. Yeah, you can see here at Walton Wood and Cherry Wood, they are keeping the party going. These are actually residents. They wear tags, Ron says, so he can remember his name, but he's over here trying to impress these three cuties on the couch here. Listen, they really do things up right here. I watched them. Pam, I watched them spike the eggnog. This one has bourbon. This was had, this one has rum. And so I think they're about to really get lit here. And uh, I think it's Miller time for me too. Back to you. Well, Paula, I, um, I think that this is definitely the kind of party that I want to go to. And make sure you let them know that they took me from the studio here to my family home around the Christmas tree with my family. So what a beautiful performance there. It's great watching them. It is. All right. Enjoy the drink. Thank you, Paula.